this is weird, and don't answer this question if you don't want to, Patrick, okay. but I have... <laughs> I don't know why you brought this up, but I did hear you discuss that you had an extraordinary disagreement uh, with your wife about yourself. Do you know what I'm talking about? By myself, you mean... Yes. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> uh, uh, listen, yes. listen, do you know um, this story? I do not know listen this Listen with story. interest. Uh, well, <laughs> one night, as you do, we were talking about stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, I just happened to mention, and, and of course, being circumcised, I said... <laughs> Chatting. They're married. They're married. They're allowed. <laughs> and she said, she said, you're not circumcised. I said, what do you mean? You've only known me a few, I, I, all my life. I remember my mother telling me why, because it was fashionable at the time. She said, you're not circumcised. I said, that's ridiculous. I should know if I'm circumcised. <laughs> of course I am. End of conversation. But the next day, I happened to be seeing my doctor. <laughs> Are you OK? <laughs> I, I, I was seeing my doctor for my annual physical. Of course. So, uh, while he was down there, <laughs> I said, uh, Excuse me, Doc. Oh, oh, by the way, uh, Irv, um, <laughs> the, my wife and I had a little disagreement. Um, <clears throat> I, I am circumcised, <laughs> aren't I? Because she says I'm not. And he goes... <laughs> not! <laughs> I said, no, 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 it's not possible. So he looked down again and he said, hey, I'm Jewish, I know the difference. <laughs> That is a bizarre story. Too much of it. <laughs> I have grandchildren. You're going to have to change your Facebook status now. <laughs> yes. No more beef stew. <laughs> well, there's more beef stew. <laughs> Uh, Phoebe, you, you... I'd say you learned a valuable lesson. Uh, was it... was it hay fever? Noel Coward's hay fever? Oh my God. I have had so many regrets about telling you guys about this story. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Occasionally, behind... backstage, there are some japes with actors, you know... Sure, sure, sure. You know, you know... Yeah. <laughs> ..that keep the other actors kind of uh, um, entertained when it's a really long run. And uh, I'm really sorry. Mum, that I'm telling the story. Nope. Um, and there was one, I was doing Hay Fever, and it was a three month run, and uh, there was one moment, <laughs> there's one moment on the stage where I was off stage with this other actor, Sam, and one of the other actors, played by, uh, one of the characters played by uh, Freddie Fox, would storm across the stage, open this door, and we'd be standing behind the door, you know, masked from the audience, and he had to go, <gasps> And then he'd slam the door and run back onto the stage. And so we always used to do something kind of quirky behind the door to make him <laughs> laugh. And uh, every night, and we started off by doing a little, like, ooh, like, we're kissing, or, like, oh, we put a funny hat on Sam. But it was three months long, this run, and we had to <laughs> up the game every night. <laughs> every single night. And so we started getting the stage management involved, and there were massive, like, hot dog costumes, and, like, things would be brought people from outside to come in. So every time Freddie would open the door, he'd be, like, really excited, and he'd be like... <laughs> And then, we'd be like, yeah. and then we had to change really quickly and then run onto stage and the other cast members could see it. And it was building and building and we were running out of ideas and there was like a week left and we were exhausting ourselves. And then suddenly it was getting to the last night and we were like, we have to have a big finish. Like, what are we going to do for Freddie? And neither of us could think of anything. And suddenly we did the matinee and we'd done this kind of wild, kind of like spangly, glittery thing. And then on the final performance, we had nothing. And we were like, we have to do something. We have to do something. We could hear Freddie coming across the stage. And we were like, we haven't thought of anything. <laughs> Sam just said, just, just, I know, I've got it, but just show them your asshole. <laughs> I, I was like, what? That's awful. He was like, it's brilliant. The stage management around me going, perfect, your asshole. <laughs> but I just thought, oh, do that. And I was like, really? And they're like turning me around. I was like, is this going to be good? Skirt on. No, it's a horrendous story. <laughs> and they had this huge pink skirt on. And everyone's like, it's gonna be great. And I was like, yeah, it's gonna be great. Oh my god, what's happening? And I was leaning down, and then Freddie was running. <laughs> and I was like, bent over with stage management, like, <laughs> <laughs> and then he opened the door, and Freddie just went, oh. <laughs> I saw like the 
glitterati of the London stage, like Olivia Coleman, Lindsay Duncan, <laughs> Kevin McNally, all going, yeah, too far. Too far. <laughs> 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 it was horrendous. Well told. Yeah. Well told. Bravely told. It's gone now. It's, it's gone. gone. It's gone. It's gone. Oh, these things happen to you. Like, your, is it your house in near Dover? Oh, yes. yes. Actually, I'm glad you brought that up, because I do rent my house. And, um, <laughs> if you're interested... Two other people. I mean, she's yes, two young. other people. <laughs> um, and it's the nearest house to France, which is very important in this story. And it's £425 a week, and it sleeps... <laughs> it sleeps um, six people for, for seven nights. It's clean. Cleaned. Is there a cleaner? Cup, yes, yes. Tonight? Anyway... <laughs> One, one day, I got a call from the police and they said, um, are you the owner of the gun emplacement? And I said, yes. <laughs> and they said, are you aware that it's been used as a drop for criminals uh, to get rid of their drugs? Or, you know, it, it's a drug drop. What? I believe that's the, yes. the phrase. <laughs> and um, I said, well, of course I didn't know. What do you mean? And they said, well... People have rented it. They were a gang, a gang <laughs> from uh, Liverpool, I think. <laughs> and um, they, they took my house <laughs> and they dropped the drugs in the bay or they... And there was a helicopter that came on the roof. It's a flat roof, yes. you see. And they, they had cocaine. They had 30, <laughs> something like 30 okay. million... <laughs> Pounds worth of what? Cake. No, no, it wasn't like a little thing. This was a massive. What? Thing. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Thirteen million. Jesus Christ! <laughs> of cocaine. Is that, is that... <laughs> no, I don't. I've never no, taken any. No, that was no, that was like wholesale. Oh, wholesale. Oh, wholesale. Yeah, <laughs> Listen, I'm, it's wholesale. Of course. <laughs> Well, of course, I was horrified because I didn't know. I mean, I don't have anything to do with the people that rent it. No. I just take the money, you know. Uh, yeah. And, um, <laughs> and I was... I, well, I could get more for it because it's really lovely, actually. But, <laughs> <laughs> all the, that but what was upsetting <laughs> to me was when it was reported, of course, in the Daily Mail, um, all the you. people online said, oh, she must be in it. You know, she's part of the gang. Oh, what? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, talking about starting out, Amelia, obviously your, your mother loves you because you're her daughter, <laughs> yeah. but she is actually a sort of a fan as well. No, it's not, it's not quite that. It's, um... Well, uh, no, <laughs> she is. Oh, goodness, right. Yeah. So, my... Uh, uh, one day my mum came to set on the Star Wars set, uh, and I was getting this thing called Cyberscanned, which is where you stand in this kind of loads of cameras and they kind of take your form and put you into a computer and make a toy or a, some sort of merchandise or your face on a cushion. <laughs> um, and so <laughs> I go off and do this and I come back and Mum's like, I've made a great friend. And I'm like, brilliant, it's lovely, <laughs> excellent. And uh, she's like, it's the merchandise, you know, director of all of Star Wars or something. And I'm like, wow, well, it's very impressive. Um, and then before I know it, what comes in the post um, is loads of cushions <laughs> with um, my face on it. <laughs> so my own mum, she gets to see it a fair amount, you know. <laughs> but apparently it's not enough. So uh, <laughs> I was kind of blown away at how much merchandise there is. Yes, it's but really, also... And it's, but not also... Even, I mean, it's just the beginning. It was like the pre merchandise not even the real stuff is out yet and my mum has all of it and but doesn't know about the doll yet so but also, this is so weird i don't know is this in your flat or her house oh, God, no. this room? Oh, right okay so basically she thought it'd be really funny if i came home and it was everywhere in my room. okay so this is <laughs> oh, no. this is this is amelia's actual bedroom well the... <laughs> <laughs> joke and then and then oh oh and then oh my goodness and we found the photo but it's not like that now That'd there is another true. reason why i'm you single took a first date back to that yeah, exactly. yeah. yeah. come on in yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and 
I'm just doing this little thing once. <laughs> I don't have a CV, I just have a bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> but this is cool, though. So your mother a big fan, yeah. but Brad Pitt also oh, a very big fan. That was the best night of my life. Yes. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell the story quickly. <laughs> tell the story quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Slippers. Uh, no, yeah, there was this auction thing that happened, and um, I. Done what, they called me and said, "Would you, you know, do you want to, do you want to um, auction something off, like maybe sort of an experience watching the show with you or something?" And I was like, "Okay, it's lovely, it's great for charity. Yeah. It'll be for some, you know, the, some something, yeah. and it'll be fine." Yeah. Anyway, so I get there, and it's basic. Thing. It'll a be a good thing. thing. Yeah. Um, I get there and it's basically like this. It's basically you know, it's the Oscars. Like there's so many celebrities in this room, and I suddenly remember that I said that I would auction something off, and so the fear grows. <laughs> so I was petrified, absolutely petrified. And then um, the the person whose table I was on is a friend, and he was being very kind and kind of put the paddle up, and I was like, thanks very much. That's very sweet. That'll be that. Uh, and then someone else's paddle up went up across the other side of the room, and I didn't really know. And then suddenly it was sort of becoming a, a bit of money, and I was kind of thinking, "Oh, this is absolutely mental." And someone went, "It's Brad Pitt," and I was like, <gasps> "Lol." Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I look over uh, to the room, and he's got his paddle up. Brad's paddle. Brad's paddle. Was <laughs> 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 it an the experience? <laughs> No, oh. not quite. Well, it didn't work out because the person whose friend who's, was my friend, I think it was probably all set up, the person who's, who was my friend ended up, you know, doing the highest bid. But, um, Boo! Uh, friend. Friend. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just kind of looked over with just the most insane emoji heart eyes being like, this is just the greatest <laughs> moment of my life. I hope my mum's not watching. But, um, <laughs> there was a slight road rage incident. And um, you know those crossings where they're absolutely... I don't know if it's the same rules apply, but um, they're not staggered, they're straight crossroad thing. Okay. I mean, you're turning I've no right. idea what you're talking about, okay. but keep going. <laughs> so you turn right, you have to turn in front of each other, not behind each other on a staggered crossing. Do you know what I mean? No! Does anyone know what I mean? So, 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 no, yeah, don't. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and you've got to go behind each. No, That's you've got to go no, in but front. I had of to each go in front because it was a. It was you a had to go in front of each other. Thing, yes. Okay. So this woman was coming towards me and wanting to go right, her right, and I was going right. So I, I turned to go in front of her, and she went, and as if I had tried to drive into her. And I thought, okay, well, there's no one else coming, so I'll just, to keep her happy, I'll do what's wrong, but I'll go behind her. And she was. Doing that in the in the car, <laughs> and it was starting to really piss me off because I was right and I was helping her out, and then I suddenly got this red mist. Just as our cars were coming next to each other, I suddenly went, ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and just as she was doing that, she went. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is based on your life. I mean, this is things. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> loosely, Graham. No, but things like, isn't the washing machine, that happened to you. What? The, the <laughs> washing. You were very hungover. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Graham, tell Tony Foster that story. <laughs> <laughs> All their stories are really cool, though, Graham. When I was teaching, <laughs> which is what this show is based on, I, I went home one weekend, and I was in my 30s. I was probably 33 years of age. I went home to see my... Uh, mother, and then I went back, and while I was at home, my mother did my washing for me, because I was only 33. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went back, and on the, on the Sunday night, I got really drunk, uh, and then I, I went for a curry, and then the next day I went into school... <laughs> I'm going to. I went into school, and it was a school in Slough, and it was a, quite a rough school, but they had a really brilliant hearing-impaired department, so there were he hearing-impaired kids who... Uh, you know, struggled. Mm. They, were, they were really looked after in the school. Anyway, I was really hungover. I went there and about break time I felt really uncomfortable. I thought, something's not right, you know? <laughs> so I went to the toilet and I pulled my trousers down and uh, uh, some of my mother's knickers had got... <laughs> had got mixed up in the wash she'd done. <laughs> and I was wearing my mother's underwear. <laughs> and I went... Oh, God, oh, no! Oh, I remember going, oh, you loser, this is <laughs> such a low point, you fucking loser. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then the curry and the booze... <laughs> the curry and the booze kicked in from the night before. <laughs> 
So I, 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 I did like a fecal Jackson Pollock. <laughs> And I started, I started going, oh, God, not this, not this as well. Oh, Jesus. So I cleaned myself up and I pulled my mother's pants back up. <laughs> and I went back into the um, classroom and I saw one of the hearing impaired kids just looking at me like this. And that's when I remembered that my, I had a microphone directly. <laughs> So maybe Mandan isn't that far-fetched. <laughs> <laughs>